Alrighty, hello everybody. We're going to be continuing the P40 tutorial here. So what we're going to be working on is uh, the cockpit primarily. And then we also might move on to uh, some engine detail as well. Which basically entails uh, everything that goes in the intake right here and the exhaust pipes that will go along here. So let's start by cutting out the cockpit shape. But first we need to prep the mesh we have here. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to line the mesh up to outline the cutout we're going to have to mitigate any weird angles or anything like that. So what we can do here is the first curve we're going to have is it's going to come down like this. So basically this entire line is going to start up here and it's going to end all the way down here. Um, this needs to blend a little bit, so we're just going to extrude that to make it a little bit smoother. See, so we're going to hide that. So we're going to have to tweak this a little bit. That's a fairly minor part that you can edit at any time, but I just felt like making it look a little bit better. So as you can see, this does not look right in any way whatsoever, but as long as we keep it looking correct from where the cockpit is down, we will be okay. So. Start by doing this. I'm going to rotate it. So right now we're just trying to make the mesh flow, which allows the smooth shader to do its best and making it look pretty. So we're going to do Control R. We're going to put a few splices here just so we can fine tune this outline a little bit. Now the importance of this is if we don't do it, we're going to be left with some really funky shadows when you try to smooth shade it, and if you don't, the mesh is going to look really weird, which we don't want. So we want it all to kind of blend together. So that is not what we want because everything's not in the correct position. So. What we can do is undo that. We're just going to outline it. We're not going to do the curvature you get here. So like that should be OK. So now we're going to add a cube. Got a rough outline of the cockpit um, on this airplane. So I have a reference. Uh, this is not a good one here. 
to look for a P40 that shows it to us. Okay, decent enough. So you can see it curve around this window here, and it actually continues up here. So all of that is a part of the fuselage. Uh, it's better visible when the canopy is closed. Or this might actually work. Yeah, so you have this is all fuselage right here at the top. And then it ends where the sliding portion of the canopy begins. So we want to keep that a part of this mesh so it flows together nicely. So the parts we're going to cut out is all the way down here. This is all sliding canopy here. So we want to make sure we get all that cut out. We're going to line these lines up just like that right there. Now we're going to do control R. We're going to bring a line down here. We're going to highlight these and we're going to extrude this because everything from here and above we want to get rid of. Don't need it. We the importance right here is to make sure this does not clip over here because then you're going to get a weird triangle here and that is uh, very difficult to fix and usually it doesn't look all that good once you've done it anyway even if you do fix it so now add as many vertices here as you would like. For me, that is perfectly fine. You could add more if you really want to. And then we're going to extrude, we're going to add another line right here because all this is part of the fuselage as we saw in the pictures prior. So we're going to start by bringing this all the way back. Let's see, we're going to look at our y-axis coordinate, copy that. Then we're going to paste it into the one above. That's not what I wanted. I wanted that in the y one. But only for the top one. There we go. Now it's perfectly vertical. So now we can press S and we can press Z and we can squish this down a little bit for the back here. We're going to do control R, drag it all the way to the back so we have that perfect vertical line. We're going to drag it to uh, we're going to drag it to the major markers in this curve which would be where these uh, supports are. And we want to make sure those are perfectly straight. This needs to be a little bit bigger. And the idea is all this is in between these lines that we outlined. That is what we are looking for. So that can bring up a little bit. That's in a good position. All right, now the back here needs a lot more attention than anywhere else because we have this dramatic curve. So we're just going to do control R. We're going to make that very, very roundy. We're going to take our end result of a cube, center it, press S, and then press X and extrude it. And that should be the cutout we are looking for. So before we do anything, we're going to take our fuselage here and we're going to duplicate it. So you can do control C, control V, and then uh, right click on it and press H and that's going to hide uh, the one you just copied and we're going to use that later for the uh, canopy. So we're going to use the Boolean tool difference, click on our newly made cube, apply, and then we can just hide this. I always like to keep them in case I need them later down the road. So as you can see we still got some pretty funky shadows here and there are a few ways you can go about fixing them. Uh, the reason we have those is because as you can see there are a lot more than four points in these uh, 
shapes here. And there really should only be three to four. You want four. So there's a way about going fixing that. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to delete these faces right here. Everything in the back is decent, but we may, yeah, we're going to need to mess with those as well. So we'll just delete everything right here, all the faces. And delete. So this is what we are left with. And what you see down here is the shape on the bottom. It's nothing to worry about. If you want, you can actually remove it all, which I'm going to do now by pressing H on each item. We're just going to hide it from view. Those are the only two things in my way here. Um, if you're looking to unhide those, top right, you got the little eyeball. Click on that, and whatever it is will become visible. So just like that there. If you're going to do a really big project and you plan to hide a lot of things and unhide them, uh, naming all your parts is tremendously helpful. I would highly recommend that. Alrighty. So these parts right here are not actually necessary. So what we can do is we can just get rid of them because you get a weird triangle on the front and the back. It's not worth keeping. This shape is really weird as well. So the key is to have simple four point shapes. That is your end result goal. We're going to delete that and then we're going to see. Boom, boom. Make sure I select the right one. That, and then we have that tiny little triangle. Delete it. Cool. Okay. So this shape is weird as well. You're getting a little bit of a weird shadow there. So we're going to delete that on both sides as well. So all the weird shapes have been deleted. Our goal is to put this back together and make it look very pretty. So here's a four point ship that shape that we can make right now. Make sure to do it on both sides. Um, if you want to, you can um, delete half the vertices on the model on the left or right side. And then you can use the mirror tool so you only have to do this once. but Personally, I don't want to have to go around and fix like these circles and things. It's a little bit of a pain, so uh, not going to do that. But if you wish, you can, and it's pretty much the same process. So we're going to do Control R. We're going to add a line. As you can see, it goes to both sides. So that's a good thing to check. I'm going to press three. I'm going to get our point mode going here. We're going to line that up. We're going to select both of them and press. E, and we want to go up. We're going to press C as well, so we have a straight line. I'm going to bring it up to here. Looks fantastic. And then we're going to select all four points on these right here. So everything has four points. What you can do is you can mess with the mesh a little bit, make it flow a little bit better. So I as you can see, this doesn't flow all that well. And here we have an extra vertice. Well, you look at that. So if you have this problem where you just have a floating vertice there, what you can do is select them, press X, and delete, or let's see, dissolve vertices. Pretty sure it's the right one. But as you can see now, the shape looks weird. As you can see, it's not a straight across across a plane. Reason is all your points are not 
um, in good positions to have a nice straight plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag these out a little bit and up. Just going to try to make it flow. See, that looks a lot better. Um, we're going to take these. These don't need to be poking up like that. Drag the middle down as well. Yeah, it looks better. And then um, here we have all of these. This can be a little bit annoying. You can select them all, press F, and make it one face. But then you run into problems because you got all these different faces right here merging into one. Um, there are ways to mitigate that issue by closing the loop off by creating almost a triangle. Um, there are ways to do that. I'm not all that experienced with that, so I am not going to do it. But if you know how to, go for it. It's going to make your life so much easier. Let's select these, drag them back a little bit. And then the other thing we want to fix, this doesn't look equivalent here because I got this poking out and this is not. So we're going to get the x coordinates of that. We're going to select this side. We're going to make it negative. Paste. Enter. Perfect symmetrical. And then we're going to just extrude that out and eyeball it a little bit because those are symmetrical. So there we are. We have that part mostly figured out. Um, this is still bending out a little bit. Um, but that's okay. Um, you can mess around with these and get the way you want it to look. You can also not mess with it at all if you know the weird shades don't bother you and you're just trying to get some practice. But now we're just um, connecting each side to each, to each other. And what I'm doing to reconnect these in case you didn't watch the prior videos, um, control, right click, or left, left click, I believe it is. Once I think about it, I always screw it up. Yeah, no control, just right click for the first one. And then you're going to hold control, right click to select the second one, or it's shift. Yeah, it's shift. Ignore me. Right click, shift, right click. I need to get an overlay, make it so much easier. Let's select it on both sides. So that's what we got. And then I'm pressing F, and that just combines them together. You can get pretty fast at this once you do tempoing circles like I have. So this is the kind of shadow thing I was talking about. It looks a little bit weird. And that's usually because, you know, some points are just, like, not lining up properly. Um, sometimes you can fix that by adding um, more points like that. But usually that only makes it worse. Um, what you can really do is just mess with it until you get something that looks nice. But if you look at the rendered... It's not terribly noticeable. This part's going to be gone anyways for us. Um, and you'll see why in a moment. So we're going to close up everything in the back here. Oops, selected the wrong line there. So this is where you can start seeing the weird lines here. So this only goes halfway, and if we look at the points, we got this point right here. That's because the program is trying to make this a quad, which means you have four points. Um, so it adds that extra point there to kind of also maintain the shape I had before, because everything had four points before we decided to cut something out of it. Drag that up a little. So what we can usually do is dissolve it, dissolve vertices. Normally that just kind of fixes that a little bit. It looks like we have the same problem here as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to 
we're going to delete both sides here. Of course, they don't look equivalent, which is not good. I mean, something got goofed up along the way. Yours might not have this problem, but there are a few ways to go about it. Uh, this part right here and this part right here should be um, fairly similar, so we'll delete the faces. We're going to delete this face. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our point mode. We want this side, because this is the side we've been working with. This is the one that most likely got goofed up. We're going to select the X coordinate. We're going to go over this side. It's the same thing, but negative. And boom, there you go. And that only works if you have it centered on the, uh, see, it would be centered on the Y axis in this case. Um, it needs to be centered, otherwise it's not going to work like that. And then this is also a little bit weird, so we're just going to zoom in. And we're going to delete that face. And then we have to do the same on the other side, because we're not using the mirror function. The problem is once you get into, uh, once you have more faces, to a model, that's more things that can get goofed up. So what we're going to do is we're going to seal these up. And then okay, seal that up. Now what we need to realize is now we have this little ledge here. And even though you can barely see it, it still exists and it'll be a gap in your model or kind of give it up. So we're just going to cover that for now because all this is going to be turned into uh, basically the floor. So this part right here we're not going to mess with because we tried to cut everything out for it to mitigate shadows and whatnot. Right, there we go. Now we're going to seal the front here. And again, we have these weird tiny little polygons here that we don't need because those are triangles and they're not really important to the shape of the airplane. So we're going to delete those, pretend like they were never there. And we're going to seal this up. All right, there we go. Um, still got to mess with this portion right here. But for now, for the sake of time, we're going to select all this. Select all of that. Looks like we have overlapping faces here, which pretty much means I selected the wrong lines. So. There we go, we got that. We have that little ledge, just making sure it's still there. Select it all. Don't forget that. Oh, pressed F there, emitted all one uh, face, which we certainly do not want. Um, everything to right about here is basically what we want. And what we're going to do is we're going to press I. And that's going to basically make a face inside the face. So we have a problem right here because I forgot to select our tiny little face right here. So this is going to be the thickness that we have right here for the, we'll call them the uh, walls of the airplane, even though it's not the terminology I would use. 
typically, but I don't know what to call it at this point. Then we're going to press E, we're going to press Z, so we have that line. I had it already, but I decided to get rid of it, and then put it back. And then we're going to drag it down to right around here. It should be decent. The cockpit doesn't really need to go that far. It could honestly stop up here, but I like more room to work with. So we don't actually have to mess with anything down here. This is not going to be the floor. We're going to add a separate, um, what are we going to call it? We're going to add a separate cube to be the floor. So there we go. We have that cut out. You didn't need to do all that patchwork if you just wanted to leave it the way it was. Let me um, see if we can also make this like 35. Make this flat right here. Alrighty, so we're gonna check here. That <clears throat> we're gonna check here. See how that looks. All right. Looks decent. All right, so that's what we got to work with. We're gonna add a cube. We're gonna start with the floor. So if we look at the cockpit here, it's straight across. Okay, some some fighters in World War II, such as I believe it was the Corsair, does not actually have much of a floor panel. You can actually look right down into the airframe, which is actually kind of cool. Unless you're trying to model it, of course. So, um, yeah, so we're going to have a straight across cube. It's going to be pretty simplistic. We're going to, see, just to show what I did there, we're going to add a cube. We're going to scale it way down. We're going to press S, Z, and then we're going to squish that down just so we're, like, you know, saving space. We don't really want a giant block there. Um, we're going to want it to start at the highest place on the floor so we don't have any weird looking shapes. I'm going to stretch this out so it covers up everything there. We're going to press this and we're going to make sure to center this, otherwise it's going to look weird. Now, we have a problem. Because the airplane gets thinner towards back, we got parts sticking out. So this is fairly easy to fix. We're going to go into edit mode, control R, and we're going to click, drag up to right around here where it's not sticking out. And the reason is, we well, let's look at this. We may actually want to bring that in. So, But the idea is that part is no longer affected by anything we do back here. That is going to be where it is no matter what I do back here. So we're going to press SX. We're going to bring it in a little bit. We just want to make sure that you can't see it from the outside, and we don't want the inside to be visible like this. We don't want that. So there we go. Select this, select this. Scale it in. Now, doesn't that look all pretty? So now we have a floor plan for the most part. decent. We're now going to work on this right here, the inside of the cockpit. So we're going to open this in a new tab as well, so we have multiple references. And then we also kind of need one from the outside. So let's see if we can find that, open that in the new tab as well. It's not on the outside, but we can see how this works. So we have the shield, I guess we'll call it, or the uh, dashboard. I guess you could also call it that. Uh, for the instrument panel, and that lines up right with the outside of the airplane. And then we have the panel here. So we're going to start with the cube. I'm going to shrink it down, make it all pretty and nice. We're going to center it as well. 
four. we're going to do is we're going to start by taking our square back like this. Press 1, or that's not the view we're looking for, press 3. So it's going to be pretty much straight out from where the top of the airframe is, so drag it back to right around here. That's about where it ends. And we're going to press, well, we're going to extrude it out like this. And then we're going to go into edit mode. Control R, just double tap enter without moving your mouse around. Now that is perfectly centered. We're going to delete one side by just to show what I did there. We're going to select and press X, and then we're going to delete vertices because that's what we're trying to delete. Going to add mirror mode. That's just automatically going to mirror everything we do to one side on the other. So if we look at the picture here, it comes straight out and it's almost like three angles, which makes our life a lot easier for modeling. So we're gonna shrink this down because it needs to be a lot thinner. Bring it up a little. So we're gonna go from here, I'm gonna rotate it, extrude. Just like that, and then we're going to rotate again, extrude. There we go. Now, this is not perfect. I'm going to press S and Y, make this thinner, bring it back right where I want to end, press S and then press X to bring it out right about there. So I'm going to toe this in a little bit. So if we look at this, this is a pretty dramatic angle right here. It's not quite 90 degrees, but it's definitely a lot more than what we have here. So we can simply take this, drag it out. Pretty. And go like this, bring it down a little. Cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to press E, extrude it forward to where we want it to end, pretty much. We're going to take this down, X. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring all of these to alignment, we'll call it, with the airframe. We want that there. We want this to actually be forward. Then we're going to do Control R, add a line there, drag that forward as well. X up, little, another one there. We're just giving it the shape we want, so. That looks nice-ish. What we can do to get rid of those is just add lines right here. Like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to smooth shade it. Select it smooth at the auto smooth button. Actually, I have to bring this back a little. Yeah, it's not going to work because we have a very 
flat shape going into a very round shape. So I'm not going to be able to do that. But that's okay. We'll just make it flat for now. Now what you can do is fix this by kind of bringing each part out a little. This right here is all really preference. Uh, it depends how realistic you want to go. That's fine for me for now. So now, as we know, the cockpit does not look like this at the end at all. This is what we got. So I'm going to come here, going to add a cube, scale it down. Press S, press Y, make it a little bit thinner, like that. Center it. Bring it up forward to about here. That's probably good. And then what we can do is we can extrude it like that, extrude it up here. Press E, S, X, bring it in a little bit. Big thing is we don't want to be able to see it from the outside. But we want to pretty much fill the entire inside. So that's pretty good. Alrighty, so now that we have that, we can start with the uh, instrument panel. So I'm add a cube, center that cube. And I'm going to start with the mirror function right off the bat, just to keep any asymmetry from happening because. The actual panel itself is symmetric. The gauges might not be, but deal with that later. So, I'm gonna press S and then X, bring that out, bring it up. We have a box. So if we look at this, it comes up, has this diagonal line right here and it goes straight and then we got a U pattern so this right here we can also cut out so got a little bit of an arch there as well so we're going to bring this out up diagonal make the basic shape control R gonna bring it up to right about here select this corner drag it in boom and then let's see. I'm going to make this thinner. All right, so if we look at it, it's a much smaller line than what we have here. That's why it doesn't look completely right. So, what we can do is we can grab both of these points, drag them up, drag them down a little bit, bring this out the bottom up right about there that looks decent so this is actually out boom a little bit bigger okay so look at this so it's in a little bit Yeah, but there is a gap here, so we're going to make it almost meet at the top, but we're going to leave a gap around the sides. So I'm going to keep this the same because I don't want to change that angle. 
bring it up like this. Oh, thank you. So we need to make this right here. So what we can do, so we can do two things. We can make it directly off the frame or this mesh right here. But as you can see, we'd have to make a lot of lines and that would add a lot of complexity and could add a lot of problems. So we're just gonna add a cube. See, so yeah, as we can see here, it is a little bit rounded. It's not a super sharp edge, so. I'm gonna start off by doing this. Press seven. I'm gonna match the angle that we have here. There we go, it's pretty good. I believe this needs to be a little bit lower. Drag this down as well. This is all positioning here, just trying to get some decent positioning. There we go. We're going to select this outer face here and then press E, press S and press Z and we're gonna just scale the edge down so we have it a little bit rounded. And then I'm gonna extrude it all the way to the back for now, just so it looks a little bit completed. And then later we can figure out either how far that back so we could just leave it like that if you can't actually find out because sometimes pictures of cockpits can be hard to find so we need to get this on the other side of course so we're going to add a mirror modifier and we're going to take this little uh, selector thingy we're going to select the fuselage so it's going to mirror it on whatever your center port of this fuselage is now if it's not if you got the center of it somewhere like out here on the side let's say you made a prop like a, a mistake somewhere um what you can do is you can take your 3d cursor which is this thing right here come over to the right and under location you're going to make x zero because the x axis or whatever you have uh going straight down the middle is the most important and you want that to be you want this to be centered on that so that is now perfectly in the center of our model. And what you can do is you can go Shift Control C. I believe it is. Is that it? No. Shift Alt C. Shift C. Control C. I'm not sure where the keybind went. Okay. So from here, you do, let's make sure it's 3D cursor is, so we're gonna do Shift, Control, Alt, C. And then you're gonna get this origin menu that's gonna pop up. And from here, you can select it to move the origin, which is this little thing right here is the origin, to the 3D cursor. We can uh, put geometry to origin, which would move our geometry. Uh, to wherever the origin is, it would center it on that. We can take origin to geometry, which would take the origin to the center of our geometry. So as long as you're not using a mirror function, um, it'll go right to the middle. So you can do that as well. And then you got center of mass, and that's pretty uh, self-explanatory, but I don't use these two. I use these three. So that's what you could do if this is not in the center. You can do that for any part anytime. So from here, 
where we had this weird U thing here, and what that actually is, that's for the gun sight. So we're going to drag this all the way to the center, drag it out a little bit, so now we have a straight line instead of a bent line like we had before. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add another one, put it right there, grab this face, we're going to drag it down. Now obviously that is way too wide, so actually I think what we need to do is we need to add an extra point. We're going to drag it all the way there. Cool. Never mind. So basically what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to get rid of this weird triangle we got going. Just like that. So that's a good width for what we're looking for. Problem that now arises is we have a triangle, which we no longer want. Now we could use the uh, boolean tool for this. It would actually work quite nicely because it is square. But for the sake of fixing this, we're just going to do it. So we're going to select those faces that we no longer want. We're going to select our line selection tool. We're going to select this line right here. We're going to press E and we're going to press Y. Or Z, sorry, not Y. We're just going to drag it straight up until it's about even with this side up here. I'm going to throw everything back together. We're going to do control R and we're going to add a line right here. Let's see, I did not mean to do that. Let's see if I can find my correct position again. Nope, did it again. There we go. So here we go. Now my origin's all messed up. There we go. So now we can select all this junk here, drag it down or up or whatever we want to do. I'm gonna take this because just realized that is really funky looking. So. It looks prettier, and much nicer. So now we got to get the bottom portion of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another line. It's probably about that high. We drag this, and we're just going to drag it out like this. Select our face. Drag it up to right about there. That's probably good. We're going to delete our faces here. Control R, add a line. Then I'm going to select each line I'm trying to combine here. Boom. There we are. Decent. You can mess around with the points, do whatever, make it look nice and pretty. So, now we're going to move on to this bottom half here. So, as we can see, it cuts off right here. This is the end of it on this side. This side, however, continues down a little bit. Right there. comes down a little, and then it kind of wraps around this giant cube right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a cube or that lower portion. I'm going to press 3 and 5 so I can get this. Make it just about the same width. And then we're going to center it. Extrude it out. Now, oh, here we go. Now if we look at it, it's not as wide as the original one or the upper portion. So we're going to make sure to bring it in a little bit. If we look at, let's see, the problem with Warbirds is almost every cockpit is different with them because people like to add avionics and things. Like this is modern right here. So that portion doesn't actually need to be there. 
just realized that actually. But anyway, you can have this on one side like it is here, or it can be almost all the way across like this. Um, I'm going to continue with this one just because, well, why not? So that's kind of up to your preference if you want to stick with one cockpit. Um, and you think you have enough images of that, go for it. Drag that down a little. Bring it out like this. So there we go. That's basically what we have, more or less. Um, so now, this side needs to come down. Well, we can't do that with the mirror function, because obviously, um, it's going to do it on both sides. So we're going to have to apply that. Over here, we're going to have to get rid of it. We're going to go on this side. We're going to extrude this down a little bit. That's all there is to it. So the other thing we have to do is we have to cut out a U-shape up here for the site. So in this, now we can do it the mesh way where we, you know, cut the faces out and put them back together, stitch it up. Or we can just add a cube. I'm going to use the boolean tool for this one. See how it turns out. Using this function is a little bit sketchy. Nope, I added that to the cube. That's not what I wanted. Lean difference. Blah. Hide. That looks fine. So we're going to leave that. There we are. So now, we're going to, um, if we look at this, the floor actually needs to be a little bit lower. We're just going to drag this down to back here. Looks a little bit better. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So now we're going to deal with the seat. So um, seats in a lot of these, you, you can't even see it. They don't have a picture from the outside. Um, I do know it's a little bit of a bucket seat. So I'm not sure where I got the image from before, but I'm going to pull pull it off of my other model, start by saving this, pull it off the other one, and then I'll just recreate it and show you how I created it. All right, so I grabbed it from the other model. Here it is. Scales should be similar, although they are not perfect. My other one was quite a bit bigger. So here's the seat. It's very simplistic. Um, but if you render it, it's got these weird lines and things. Because of the way I made it, we'll see how ours turns out here. So we're going to start with the cube. We're going to make the C portion here. So I'm going to start with the mirror function. Delete the vertices, mirror, drag this back a little bit. All right, so it has a gentle curve that comes up, but then it also has a, another weird shape that comes up like this. So what we can start with is we can start with just a simple cube. We're going to make a very, very bad looking seat. This is not what we're looking for at all, but it's a good place to start. So we need the back to be quite a bit thinner than it is. So we're going to bring it back just like that, highlight it all, make that seat a little bit longer. We're going to make the bottom thinner as well. Fantastic. So now we need to start with the curve here. So we can start by doing that. Now it's a little bit curved, but we also don't want a hard angle here either. So we're going to do Control-R, 
drag a line down there, drag a line down there. We're going to select this part right here. And there. Now we need a more dramatic curve from it, you can see here. So we're going to actually start the curve right here. Highlight this. Let's drag that up a little. Drag this up a little. Drag that up a little. Drag this in a little. Just micro adjustments to get a little bit more of a curve. This is a bit of an eyeballing thing. Mine currently looks a little bit funky because the way I did this. Okay, that's fine. So now we're going to do Control R on right here on the scene. We're going to drag it out right here because we need to make the side right here, and we're just going to bring it straight up and out. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to bring this out a little. So here are the two parts we're trying to connect, right, right here. So I'm going to delete the faces of these. Delete these faces as well. And now we need to bring all this together somehow. So let's start by adding a line. Hang on. There we go. Lines up with this. And start by... Adding another line that lines up with this. So now we have this. Cool. Now, this portion. So here we have four points and then another four points. Make sure to make it symmetrical on both sides. So that's what we got. Now we can start manipulating it. So I'm going to go into the point mode. We're going to select these two, bring it down here. We're going to do Control R right here, bring it up. This we actually want to be higher up, right around here. If we look at it, we've got this dramatic angle right here from almost the very top. So up here it would be, and we want it to come down here to about here. There's your basic shape. I just got to play with it to make it look the way you want it to. Um, Reference image is very useful when it comes to this. If you do enough digging, I'm sure you'll find something on it. It's usually one or two images. I found one to make the one that I'm using here. Big thing about this is to make sure you don't have any really sharp edges, because there shouldn't be any. Now, here's a problem. I extruded this, and we don't want that. So instead of undoing everything and redoing it, we're just going to cut it. And we're going to seal those up. Perfection. So. I'm going to grab this, drag it up, drag that there, drag these. Cool. All right, so now we got to work on some other curves that we got going on here. need to take this entire line right here. We want 
entire back here to be curved, so I'll just drag that in a little bit. Add another line, do the same thing. I'm add another line right here. Add a smooth finish to it. I'm going to turn auto smooth on. Okay, it's still a little bit chunky for my taste anyway. So from the inside, I'm going to grab all these faces, drag them in a little bit. Got to remember to grab this line as well, because if you start, you know, selecting half a line and moving it around, you get some really weird shapes and things get out of control really quickly. So we don't want to go past this line, because if we decide to make it thinner, now we have this problem, and that's something else you got to worry about. If you want it to go further than that, you can select this entire line as well and move them together. It's the other option you have there. So there we go. Now we're going to take this. We're going to drag this up. Actually, I'm not going to do that. Hang on. Here's what we can do. We can extrude that straight up. Grab these two, bring them in. Now it's not a hard angle like that, so what we can do is we can add some points in here, make it flow a little bit. If you look at this, it comes in and then up instead of this round thing. So need this to be a little bit more dramatic angle. Something a little more like that. So that's a fairly rough seat we got going there. You can mess with it a little bit. We don't have as many of these weird shadows as we do over here, which is definitely a plus. Do control R again. Add a line here because we need the supports on the bottom. We're going to bring them down a little bit. Voila. So we delete that. Take our new seat. We're going to center it. And changing that to zero. Press seven, scale it in, it needs to fit comfortably in here. And then there's the floor. And this is where you kind of resize it, make it look right. That's good for what we're doing. So, um, we have the basic panel here. We now have a seat. Now, um, from here, we're going to finish up the canopy. So, prior to this, we copied the fuselage before we cut that out. So, we need to find that again. So, that should be one of the cubes down here. That, not that. Hope we can leave that though. There it is. This the cylinder right here. 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by um, start the cube. Now what we have to do first is we need the shape. Right, we're going to need that. So what we do is we get rid of this, this cube here. And then if we want to check the fit, what we can do is I'm going to go shift Control alt c I'm going to make the origin go to the geometry. So I can move this around with ease. OK. So from here, I'm going to go shift A. We're going to add a cube. Like that. We're going to cut out each one of these, uh, we'll call them windows. And the canopy, we're going to make a cube for each one. And what we're going to do with those is we're going to combine them all so it's all one shape and then we're going to cut it every single one out from the part that we just cut out right here the canopy Now the big thing is to make sure that um, each part that you do here is inside this, because if you have something clipping out, then it's going to look real funky. The thing is, we do not want anything back here to be there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this shape here make sure there isn't. We're going to cut it off right there. Try to line that up as best as possible. It's decent. And then it doesn't really matter what we do back here. We just want to make sure it covers everything. OK, so once we have these four, We're going to cut it off right here. Yep, that looks good. Bring it back, actually. Everything up front we want gone. Run it all. Shoot on X. Select it. Difference. Now, the problem that we have here, if we hide this, is now we have these flat surfaces. It's still solid from the inside, and there's a way to fix this. So if we go back. I haven't done anything to this yet. We're going to find the cube, and I'm going to name this uh, pit cutout so I can find it again. It's right there. I'm going to hide that. So I'm going to copy this, paste it. I'm going to press S and just bring it in a little bit. That's going to be the thickness of our canopy. I'm actually going to zoom this out a little bit. OK, then we're going to grab this, go forward. Sure, I have adequate room to work with here. That looks good. Now we're gonna from the bottom. Mad 
spooling tool, press C, select this inner cube. Oh, that's wrong. Part here, we want that, but we want it where it Difference? No. There you go. Difference apply. Grab that inner one and delete it. Because we don't need it. Now we're going to find this. Add the booling tool. Difference. Select it, apply, and hide it. So here we go. We have our canopy piece here. Now we got to make, we got to, first of all, because we edited the plane a little bit, we want this to overlap just a little bit. Drag it up a little as well. And then actually I'm gonna delete those vertices and fix it. So, boom. Nope. Just gonna seal this back up. At this point, I'm not really worrying about having triangles and such. The big thing is to make sure it's even on the same, so we, on either side. So we have a triangle here. And that is the same. As far as the inside goes. Did this, did this, and did this, and then is that what we did? Yep. So now we take this, this, Cool. So there we go. We have our canopy portion now. So now we need to worry about the front. I'm gonna add a cube. Nope. Put on the magnet tool. That's why it seems like I had like no frames or something. So we have a little gap there. First of all, I'm gonna extrude this up a little. Back. Just a tad. Grab everything forward. Drag it forward. There we go. Now it is where we want it to be. This we're going to center. Bring it up here. Delete one side. Mirror. Boom. So we want it to mirror the uh, this portion right here because it needs to blend so I'm gonna start by getting the important parts to work together like this needs to go here so there's your start and end it needs to start here end here and it needs to follow this path more or less so we're going to start by the bottom I go right here. That's, that's okay. And then we're gonna go here. Bring it up right here. It does not need to be perfect. I 
However, it can be if you want it to be. That looks okay. So we can drag that back a little bit. Cool. So now, oh, I did not mean to do that. So now, I need to find a good picture of the front of this airplane. So here we go. It's decent. We got a arc here, right here. That's what we got to make now. So it's a separate piece from up here. So I'm going to add another cube, scale it in, center it. Drag it up here, right to where it should begin. Which is right around, right around there. Yep. And then it should be at the same height. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on a two-plane field. I'm going to make a U-shape. So we need it to end more or less right here. This is not centered, so you kind of have to ignore it, but more or less up out here. So if we look, it's almost straight down. And then all the curve is up here, if you look at it. So all the curves right here, and that goes straight. So I'm going to put it here, extrude this out. That, that, that. Then add in as many points as you need. That looks okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this face. And that face should be on zero. There we go. Now it's now it's on zero. Delete the face mirror. I normally do that at the beginning, but I forgot in this case. We're gonna rotate it so it's along the angle it needs to be, just like that. We're gonna grab the end. We're gonna oh, we're gonna extrude it. Then we're gonna rotate it like this. We're gonna do it in two segments. Scale that out. And down. Now this is at a weird angle. So that needs to be fixed, which it can be. We're just going to manually make all this line up. As long as you eyeball it, you shouldn't be able to tell most of the time anyway that it's not absolutely perfect. However, if it's not, you can also get some weird shading angles, which is why you see that happen so often. I think there we go. So we bring this down a little bit. So that's what we got. And this should actually connect together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press E. One up. Do that. And then I'll connect those two together a little bit later. Cool. So now what we need to worry about other than the fact that this is not high enough, which now it is. Well, too high. There we go. We have two parts that kind of come together here, right here, this little part right there. So this is going to go from pretty much this side right here. It's going to come out to there. Of course, we can just drag it in there, but that's, that's not going to you know, look too good. There's going to be some gaps and things. So what we're going to do is we're going to see these are both mirrored, so we can just join those together. 
perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a face here. Going to make it go there. So we're going to connect these two together. Delete the faces. Both, both faces you want to connect. No. Merge that one. Here we go. There we go. Now, it looks funky because it's at the right angle as far as this goes, for the most part. But now it's getting a lot thinner. It's weird. It's a weird shape again. So what we can do is we can drag this out, drag this up. Mess around with that until it looks decent. The other thing we can do is we can do um, seven. Select all of that. Get a little bit wider. So select as well. A little bit wider. Three. Bring it down a little bit as well. Still looking a little weird, but basic idea is there. That's that's basically what you're doing. Is you're making the shape, merging it to that shape. Now I messed up the mesh a little bit. I'm gonna center those. Now those are completely connected. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to delete these two faces. I'm going to select each point and center it exactly on zero. This got a little messed up, apparently. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this little drop tool, put it on there again. We're going to do the same with that. There we are. Looks all pretty again. As far as this goes, I think I'm going to bring this over like that, make it a little more straight. Of course, that causes problems here, so we're going to have to do a little bit of rotating. More or less, that's a general idea. So now, we have a new problem to solve, as always. That's what makes this fun, solving problems. So now we need this to wrap around all the way to here. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to grab these. We're going to bring it back a little bit. We want to start the arch up here so it flows a little bit. We want the back to go back as well. Okay. Here we are. I'm going to add an extra point here and drag it up because that's bothering me. What we can do is we can delete that face. We're going to add a new face by doing Control R and dragging it down. Again, delete that face. Those are the two faces we want to connect. So I'm going to figure out what this little thingy is. Oh, OK. That's just a weird angle. OK, we can fix 
this right now, actually, by grabbing this and dragging it in a little. Cool. Pretty. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm going to connect these together. Oop, not that. But that. Now, clearly, this is not what we're looking for. So we're going to do Control R to add more cuts. And each cut we do, we're just going to make it look the way we want. And do one after the other. So we have a nice, nice curve going. You want to more or less follow the outline of the airplane, because otherwise you get some, you get sticking out like we have here. We also want to follow it here as well. Now, what I like to do is to make sure that the bottom of these is clipping into the airplane mesh, because then you don't have anything sticking out. that. And then up here it's just not possible, but that's okay. Um, there's our basic cockpit outline. Um, pretty simplistic. It looks really messy right here. Um, let's see if we can fix that a little bit. So part of the reason it looks messy is this. We got a weird angle. I'm going to hide this so I can see it better. So we're going to select all of these and we're going to drag them up. We're going to drag that down. I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Back side of this can also be brought down. How we can get away with this here. So this looks weird from the inside. So let's say you're sitting in here. That looks weird. So we do not want that. So we're going to bring the bottom out a little. Bring it up. There we go. I grab both of these and drag them up as well. Out. There we go. Hmm. Better. Not great, but better. Doesn't look bad. But there's your end result. It's not too difficult to do. Um, if you want a smoother, you don't want like bends like we have here. Um, what you can do is you can use that uh, dissolving feature where you can dissolve the vertices to fix that. And then you can add cuts, drag it around. Because um, of the way we make this, you can also make this part right here from scratch like we did from the front. Um, but it's not going to match up with the fuselage as well. But in this case, on this airplane, you can do that from scratch and no problem. So anyways, that's where we're going to end it today because this took quite a bit longer than I expected. Um, yeah, and hopefully we'll be back uh, within a week or so with a new video. Uh, next video, I'm going to do some more work on the cockpit, I think, and then we will 
see how long that takes, and then we can get to some other stuff with the airplane. So anyways, have a great day. Thanks for watching.